Hoy visitamos al artista G.H. Kovagimian, uno de los principales referentes del New Media Art. Vengan conmigo. Language is always, it's a lot. I mean, people speak it, they change, <laughs> they, new words come in, whatever. But the same thing with visual language. Visual language is dynamic because people are communicating, so they're always talking about things. But what do the artists do? Ah, see, now the artists now look at this and they say, okay, well, positionally, we have a whole new visual language. All information is there. It's not presented necessarily in an art gallery. You can take all of the media, photography, painting, dance, architecture, 3D, everything, it's all on the, in virtual space. And you also have physical space. So now you have both things happening and they're all over the world. So the artist goes, oh, this is global. I can do this. I can do 3D environments. I can do physical interaction, you know, um, augmented reality, which is what I showed you. Yes. You know, I mean, there's. It begins to be much more interesting in terms of uh, new parts of the language of the world to explore. Um, the other part to it is that, uh, as an artist, you know, you always take a political position. But your work, just by being an artist and working in art, it's a political it's position funny. because you're not doing corporate marketing. You're not trying to sell a product, you know. Exactly. You're making art, right? Which is, people don't understand what that is. Is it, maybe what you're saying is like you say in the statement and on itself of which position you take in society. Exactly. And your opinion about it as exactly. well. Exactly, exactly. You can see that the, the painting behind and then this is an augmentation. The painting is a marker and it's actually 3D. So you can move in and out towards it. Yeah, and that's 3D, right? That's a self portrait. Uh, this is a discourse for um, what painting is, the painting space. Yes. And the virtual space, the screen space. Exactly. So essentially what you have is uh, you have an appropriation, which are, these are Joseph Albert's paintings. Yes. Uh, the discussion is um, Albert's sort of painting space, because he had this kind of idea of colors as coming in and going out, and formal colors. <clears throat> the funny thing is when you go to art school, the first thing they do is they teach you Joseph Albert's in painting. Okay, that's so if you go to art school, you know Joseph Albert's. Uh, yeah. Uh, so that's like the kind of the language of painting or modern painting or whatever, right? And then, uh, so then I decided, well, okay, fine. Then we have a virtual space, the net space. Um, and that, how do you put the two together? There's a real kind of funny thing about this. All right. <laughs> because the Joseph Albers, if you go to their website, yeah. right, there's a big sign that says, Warning! Do not copy, you know. <laughs> it says copyright this and that and the other thing. So I looked at that and I said, come on, you're, put, you're putting something out on the internet. It's totally public. What? You don't think there are people that are <laughs> Of course they're going to copy. So you went to get on copy? Yeah, they don't copy it, you know. So what, right? It's a profession. It's fair use. Yeah, but this is also, this is also essentially a, uh, another discussion which has to do with um, fair use. Yes. But also in terms of the actual language of art. Yes. You know, because uh, uh, Joseph Albert is part of the language of art. Exactly. So me doing this is what traditional artists would do. They go to a museum, they take a canvas, they copy it, right? Same thing. Then the web come, came along the internet and I started making internet net based art. You know, and that's where I started doing websites. And I did, uh, my first kind of website was a piece called Faux or Fake Conceptual Art. So basically what I did, and this was 93, 
So I started to remake conceptual art pieces, okay? And I put it up on the web as a, uh, you know, kind of a web appropriation, but they weren't really remakes, you know, like that piece over there, is, for instance, is a, a faux conceptual art piece. Yes. And that's for a takeoff on a Joseph Kasuth, where he had a piece, it's his signature piece, market piece, <laughs> It's three chairs, there are three states. He has a photograph of a chair, wooden folding chair, uh, a dictionary definition of a chair, and um, then the chair, right? So I did a redo or remake of it, and that's a photograph of a chair. Then the word sit on, kind of like a sign, I've simplified that. And then uh, I cut apart the chair and reassembled it like a uh, cubist chair. Okay, so that's the discussion, is kind of. But the point is the, the faux conceptual art, the fake conceptual art. What it was is that it has three parts to it. It has the physical objects. Yes. It has the internet information piece, which is a proposal to make the artwork. Yes. And then I have a boxed set of small proposal boards that are, it's like Duchamp's uh, Boite en Venise. It's actually the proposals for, you know, little objects. Yes. A lot of times in the 90s I was working with Peter Sinclair, but we were doing these kind of uh, performance art pieces, installation performance called the soap opera for laptops. And essentially what we did was, I was, uh, we took laptop computers, we put them on radio co controlled cars, we used them as robot performers. We programmed them so that they, they used um, uh, text to speech and then speech recognition. So they would talk to each other. The discussion basic on that was the way people uh, project or uh, humanize or anthropomorphize. They, they turn, they make human machines, they kind of try to make machines human, and they have some sort of relationship to it. The other place is the question of what is virtual information space, uh, you know, which is that all information is now equal, okay? Yes. And it's there all the time. If it's on the internet, there's no, there's no time when it's not there. It's always there. You just go get it. Exactly. Right? The challenge is the idea of space and time, right? Like... Exactly. Uh, and all information is the same. So, you know, my artwork and the Museum of Modern Art, they're the same. When you go to the internet, you look at them exactly equal, right? Which art world really hates. They can't stand yes. that, you know. There's essentially an uh, uh, interactive browser, uh, which is also a hack. It's a, it's a post browser. It doesn't use Netscape. You notice that it's physically... Uh, interactive you use your hands to move the objects around and now if you look you'll see that in the center is a, a, a cylinder and that cylinder is actually an infrared scan of you'll see there's my face there so essentially what you're doing is you're taking I'm in two places I'm in a physical real world and the virtual world and do you have nostalgic for the old times or are you going to look back? Okay, no, no, I never nostalgic. No, no, no. No, no, the best time is right now. The best time is right now. And I have, you know, for me, like since I do this new media art, all my friends are younger than me. You know, they're all in their 30s and 20s, right? And they, and they, I feel very comfortable with them. When you get to people my age, and I tell them what I'm doing, they go, their eyes gloss over. <laughs> they don't know what they don't know what to think. They, you know, they keep on having these you know revival shows like oh gee, it's got their art. And I'm like, oh no, <laughs> I really don't. I really don't want to talk about the past, right? Because the kids, the young people, young artists, they're making the whole world. It's great. I mean, I look at them. I get inspired. I do some right. work. You know, they like me. It's everything's fine. Y así terminamos nuestro capítulo de hoy. Nos volvemos a ver el próximo jueves y no olvides suscribirte a Cosmo Arte TV. Chao, chao.